Hello, this is gonna be a quick explanation of my plasma toroid driver because a few people were curious. So this is the circuit. It's a self-oscillating circuit with two MOSFETs, a push-pull circuit. It operates somewhere between a class D, a current mode class D and a class E operation. So the waveforms look generally something like this. You get the zero voltage switching roughly but generally not a zero DVTT switching. So it's not exactly class E, but it operates close to class E. It's using two of these IRFP260M transistors, which are uh, 50 amp, somewhere around there, 200 volt transistors. The drain voltage actually generally stays below 70 volts or so, so you could probably use 100 volt transistors. I have these, um, 100 volt, 100 amp transistors that I may try with this circuit in the future, although they might be too small. You also want to use something with a lower capacitance, which these transistors aren't great for, but I had them on hand and they seem to work fine. So this is the circuit. You can see it's a pretty straightforward self-oscillating circuit. The feedback works similar to the it's typical self-oscillating class E circuit. You just take feedback from the tank circuit and it goes directly into the gate. I did try adding a gate resistor in here to sort of um, decrease or, or increase the phase delay a little bit, which could get better zero voltage switching, but the circuit didn't want to start oscillating when I did that, so I ended up just connecting it directly and it works fine. So the tank circuit is formed from these eight capacitors and they will carry quite a bit of RF current. It's around five amps through these capacitors, five amps RMS around there. And these ones will carry around 10 amps RMS. So they have to be capacitors that are capable of handling that much RF current. I'm using COG ceramic capacitors for all of those and they work great. Um, these ones are two 100 picofarad, three kilovolt COG capacitors in parallel. And these ones are one 5.6 nanofarad, uh, I think 400 something volt COG capacitor. These should actually be multiple capacitors in parallel, but I ran out of uh, one nanofarad COG capacitors. So I just used a single 5.6 nanofarad and it does work, but I will be replacing those with a few one nanofarads in parallel. Then these guys actually, these guys handle around 10 amps and they're actually overheat a bit. That's these guys. So I'm gonna be replacing them with probably four 47 picofarad capacitors in parallel instead, which should be able to handle the current. And then of course they also have to be rated for a few kilovolts because we do get a few kilovolts across the work coil. The work coil itself, in my experience, it has to be at least around two and a half micro henries or the circuit will not start oscillating. So I'm using around 2.8 micro henries. Um, try not to go below two and a half micro henries. You might be able to get it to work, but in my experience, it, it wouldn't start oscillating when I had less inductance than that. The choke, which you can see here, is just 40 turns center tapped on around a one inch diameter coil. And this is, I think, 18 gauge magnet wire, and it works great. It doesn't get hot or anything. If you want something more compact, you can use uh, something like this on an iron powder core. This is 47 micro henries, which is more than enough. 10 micro henries should be fine. And I tried two of these uh, just, just in series as, as these two coils and that works fine. So they don't have to be one coil center tapped, it can be two separate inductors, and that'll also work. But then you have to worry about saturation if you're using iron core coils. Now on the gate, we also have these uh, TBS diodes and resistors. The pull down resistors, just 10K, works fine. Not super important. The TVS diodes are probably not necessary, but I would recommend having them there because under weird load conditions, you can actually get a uh, quite big voltage on the gate. And I actually did end up killing a MOSFET with that. So you have to be careful. I'd recommend putting the TVS diodes there. 
And then gate bias voltage just comes from a potentiometer, which is getting 12 volts input and goes through two 1K resistors, just one for each gate. So that's these two resistors, one for this gate, one for this gate. So I found this circuit to be much more stable than the typical Class E, a self-oscillating circuit, when it comes to driving an unstable load like the plasma toroid. It seems to be much more capable of handling the uh, impedance mismatch and just changing load in general. And I'm just running it at 18 volts, works fine. It draws between two and four amps, depending on what the plasma is doing. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This input capacitor is important for filtering out the high frequency. Um, that can be a film capacitor or I'm using an X7R uh, ceramic capacitor. That's about everything. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask. And yeah.